We're on the road again. <laughs> and we're in wee Scotland to see my friend William Wallace. Ever since we quit our jobs almost a year ago, our adventure has been guided by ticking things off our bucket list. And Scotland has been on my bucket list ever since I was a little girl. So let's do this. So we've made it to the first stop on our Scottish adventure and it's the Kelpies. They are the largest equine sculptures in the world and each one of them weighs 300 tonnes. So the sculptures pay homage to the heavy horses that worked along these canals and they're the backbone of what built the Scottish industry and economy. I'm not that impressed to be honest, but if it was a 3000 millimetre spanner, can you imagine that? <laughs> Who wants to see that? This place would be heaving if it was a spanner, but horses? Who wants to see horses? Typical, typical. Any time I try and do something horse related, you've always got to have your lot off, haven't you? They probably cost a fortune too. They always do, horses. Right, that's it. We're going back to Slovenia. My interactions with horses aren't very good. No, John's a bit scared of horses. I'm not scared. I'm sorry, love, you're not scared of horses, are you? You're a big, tough, strong man. No, I'm just not scared of horses, that's all. There's your big, brave man right there. Not scared at all. So I think it's fair to say that John's opinion of these incredible sculptures might be somewhat clouded by the fact that he is a massive scaredy cat. Coming this way, I would honestly recommend coming to see them. They are genuinely impressive. But I suppose I'd better go and find that little wimp. Look, they even do mini ones as well. What is it with people that want double of everything in all different sizes? Look at her, look. She's got her first bit of dirt on her. She looks proper now. I cannot believe that I've lived in the UK for nearly 10 years now and haven't made it to Scotland. We've explored a fair bit of England and a bit of Wales, but ridiculously, Scotland was the top of my list and we haven't come yet, have we? Yeah, well, we got here about eight o'clock last night, so we couldn't show you, it was a bit dark, but we found a lovely little park up in the woods, a little bit muddy <laughs> because it hasn't stopped raining since we left the house yesterday until we just got out then. So hopefully that's uh, all the rain out of the way anyway. Yeah. And if you're wondering, the van's going a treat. We found a few little niggles that we need to sort out and we're going to do like a big upgrade when we get back and add all the things we need for the Arctic then as well. But one thing we need to sort out is some proper like cold weather gear. So I tried to take John shopping last night. You can imagine how that went. What do you reckon? That's a no from me, John. The first thing you pick out and it's bloody workwear. Epic fail. They just didn't quite have my style there. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> anyway, enough of this waffle. Let's go see Sterling Castle. Now this impresses me. We've made it to Stirling Castle and it is amazing. It's the setting for one of my favourite TV shows of all time, also set in Scotland, Outlander. And when you stand on the battlements here, you can look out across the valley and you can see the, where the battle for Stirling Bridge happened, which is in Braveheart, you know, where they all come running out the woods and take out all the English soldiers on the bridge. So cool. I'll tell you what, old Stirling Castle. That was Stirling, it was. <laughs> You're such a goon. It was. <laughs> i tell you why he's in such a jolly mood tonight, because I made him a curry. You love a curry, don't you, love? Mm, love a ruby. I love a cheeky ruby. Um, but I've got a hot tip that I wanted to share with you. 
when we pulled up today, we met one of our lovely followers, John, who told us about, what was it, the... Uh, explore. Go Explore, I think it was. Yeah, it? so through Historic Scotland, you can buy a Go Explore Pass. And we had a look at it, and it's only 35 quid for a week. Which, if you think, like, going into Stirling Castle was £17.50 each, if you bought it online. So you've only got to do, like, two things, and it pays for itself. And you can go to unlimited attractions for the week. So, hot tip on that one. And but thanks, John. We pulled up, and he said, sorry, no motorhomes can park here. Jess was like, oh, don't worry about that. It's a Sainsbury's delivery van. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I know. I've been watching your stuff. <laughs> so it was well strange. We're yeah. never going to get over that. It's so yeah. strange. It's so lovely. Like, we love it when people say hello. Yeah. And we've had a couple of people message us, oh, we just see you on the motorway. <laughs> I think, because uh, at the minute, I think it's such a sort of... Identifiable yeah, van, isn't it? I think in a few years, it'll be uh, just... Yeah. Hopefully, there'll be lots of them. I can't wait to see our first one on the road. We've had quite a few people send us messages saying that they've converted them and pictures yeah. and or things like that. Or bought one as well. Yeah, but uh, can't wait to see another one on the road eh? yeah. but anyway right I've got to eat because I'm famished tell you what I did love in the comments everyone realising Jess isn't so innocent as she looks <laughs> I don't know what you could possibly be talking about old potty mouth Jess I tell you what she'll she'll fit right in here with the old Scottish because apparently their favourite word Scottish the old Scottish their favourite word is the C word and that's an Aussie thing as well. But they say it in like a term of endearment sort of thing mm -hmm. with um, the Aussies. Yeah. It's uh, like a greeting in Australia. Yeah. All right. I can't say the word. Yeah. I like you. But, uh, but I think the Scottish are like that as well. So mm. if you're Scottish, tell us. Is it used the same way as in Australia? Although I have to admit, Jess doesn't say the C word. Do I you? don't. I don't really. Well, very, very rarely. <laughs> you know the worst thing about van life? Washing the dishes. And you know who gets that job, don't you? Acting hard done by, the deal is I cook, you do the dishes because you do not want to eat John's food. And also, I bet you've got an annoying partner like me as annoying. well. Annoying! Does any of your partners leave that look? Look how much she's left. So she had all her dinner but she left that. Not even a spoonful and she can't eat it. I'm what? full! How my many times do I tell you? Yeah, but I don't want to eat it. And also, my housemate at uni told me that a lady never finishes her dinner. I'm definitely not a lady though. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. It's freezing this morning. It really is a bit chilly. I've got hats on, gloves on, body warmer on. Still got his shorts on, though. <laughs> but it's only eight degrees. What are we going to do? I think we just need to acclimatise. It's going to be fine. But anyway, we've had a lovely start to the morning. We had a beautiful, peaceful woodland car park park up last night. I think that might be going to be a theme for our uh, Yeah, travels, I think so. the woodlands here in Scotland is the one. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful. We were saying nice. that we'd love to come in autumn when the leaves are like yeah. still on the trees a bit more. We're just a little bit late, so definitely one for the future to come back in the autumn. But this morning, we have been to the Wallace Monument. And I reckon William Wallace has to be one of our favourite characters of all time from history doesn't he yeah that's sort of our bag really isn't it like we love watching all that sort of uh the old history buff stuff yeah it? all the weaponry yeah and... gladiator we love a bit of that <laughs> john uh, and i've had a discussion this morning though he thought the gladiator was a real person it is <laughs> oh russell crowe he just time traveled <laughs> tell you what though if we could have a superpower i would choose time traveling yeah. that's by the by the wallace monument would definitely recommend it um it's got steep amazing spiral staircases but uh, just be prepared for that but i think the coolest thing has to be that they have william wallace's actual sword yeah it's huge like it's as tall as me it's it unbelievable enormous. how he wielded that i'll never know i know he must have been so strong so yeah that's so cool to see and then they've got like armament rooms the view from the top yeah but incredible. i'll tell you what they've got some statues oh yeah they've got um sort of figureheads of all those famous scottish people. all these famous people i'll tell you what that's worth a look anyway isn't it <laughs> it was really good so yeah i would definitely recommend coming it was only about 10 pounds so if you're in the area make sure you check out the wallace monument So after that beautiful drive, we've made it to the edge of the Cairngorms National Park and we're at a place called the Hermitage, which is just outside of Pitlochry. And um, it's famous because it has some of the tallest trees in all of the UK here. 
But I tell you what, I reckon it rains a bit here because <laughs> it is mossy. There's moss everywhere, up the trees, all over the rocks. But it kind of makes me think of the enchanted forest and we're waiting for like a little pixie to jump out from behind a rock. Yeah, it is beautiful though, isn't mm. it? Anyway, one thing I did want to say to you guys, one of our absolute favourite things to do when we're travelling is to take the low road or the B road. Because obviously Google Maps always sends you the direct and fastest route, but some of the best things we've ever seen is by trying to figure out our own routes going through the little towns and villages. So we've just been talking and we were saying that at the beginning of this year we was like really scared to quit our jobs, weren't we? Not just scared, I was terrified. Because <laughs> like we were both in steady jobs, reasonable pay, like knew it inside out really. Mm -hmm. And you know when you're in them jobs and you sort of think, I'm never getting a job as easy as this. So yeah. it almost scares you into doing what you want to do really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it keeps you there, it holds you. And it's the comfort zone. But I honestly think that the comfort zone should be called the danger zone. One of my favourite sayings is seek discomfort. And I truly believe that it's when we challenge ourselves, when we push ourselves outside of our norm, that's where the real magic in life lies. And this has honestly been the best year of my life. Yeah, well we had a flashback a minute ago, didn't yeah. we, to when we was in the outback and like that day when it was real oh. hot and just standing there and we've almost got that same feeling today really in this like walking through this forest yeah with all these towering trees in scotland and, the, and yeah. yeah it's just wild it really is and like when i was at my job i couldn't imagine this life like i had this dream idea of what a life could look like where you went traveling but I, it wasn't tangible it wasn't possible but it's only by quitting my job that i can actually see this life and we can see it kind of unfolding ahead of us So I know we've been waffling, but all I really wanted to say is, if you've got the opportunity to do something, don't let the comfort zone stop you. Let's go find a park up. Morning everyone. I got up nice and early this morning to try and get a little time lapse, a little sunrise for you. It's a little treat to go with it as well. Sorry for what John did to your eyes this morning, but I think you'll agree it was worth it. We honestly didn't know what it was going to be like though, because we pulled up here in the dark last night and woke up to that. It was just amazing and I think that's got to be one of our absolute favourite things about wild camping. And this has got to be one of our top 10 spots. But I need to top up my tea, so let's get back inside. Back in out the cold. Back in some clothes as well. <laughs> I hope you like that this morning. I'm so sorry everybody. But we've just realised we haven't told you how the BE van's getting on. Well, I'll tell you what, it is brilliant. Like mm. the biggest thing we've noticed is it almost feels like two two vehicles yeah. because you've got your front of your cab and your back. But the heat is, um, like, that's the why, reason we got it, really, is to stay warm in the back. Mm. But the night heater hardly kicks in at all. But when we go from the back to the front, it is absolutely freezing in the morning in the front. And you think that's what the cold air is coming through. Yeah, yeah, in a panel van. So it's incredible, really. Yeah, it really is toasty and it's so cosy. It's the most, I think, a van's ever felt like a proper tiny home to me. Like, yeah. it honestly feels like we're traveling around in a little cabin. Like, we were watching Braveheart in bed last night. Freedom! <laughs> Had to be done. Love it. <laughs> But um, yeah, we were in bed, like snuggled up, and we could have just been anywhere, couldn't we? Yeah. It was so toasty, so I crazy. I wanted to get up this morning and do some reenactments <laughs> from uh, Braveheart, but Jess was not keen. I saved you. That's the best I could get from him, was your <laughs> the bare bum this morning. But anyway, John's promised me a bakery treat this morning for our breakfast, so let's go to Pit Lockery. Definitely going to miss this park up.
Well, we made it to Pit Lockery. It's a gorgeous little town. All the like matching buildings and stuff. It's so nice. And I've got myself stocked up for dinner tonight. Been to the butcher and the baker, but there isn't a candlestick maker. But we're going to have a lovely casserole with dumplings tonight. So that'll be good. Nice and warming. Well, I'll tell you what. <sighs> She is real cold today. It was minus one last night, wasn't it? I've got my big girl jacket on today. <laughs> but um, we haven't actually got any cold weather gear, really, have we? Well, I've got a bit. John's got nothing. He's still wearing shorts today. So there's a big mountain warehouse here, and I think the Scots get it pretty cold up here, so hopefully they've got some stuff stocked up for me. We need to get it sorted, that's for sure. So you'd be pleased to know, I finally convinced him to buy some actual hiking shoes. I wanted to try and find some hiking crocs. <laughs> They're going to keep your feet warm, aren't they? Much better than the old Nike trainers you've been slipping about in anyway. Go on then, give us your best catwalk. Mm, I'm excited about the bread in your bag. <laughs> So not only did I get him to buy some proper hiking boots, I got him to buy two proper pairs of socks and two jumpers. Most clothes is boy and use. But we're a bit on the fence what we want to do really, because obviously where we're going is going to be cold. So we want to get the best gear we can. And we've sort of realised last year when we went to France that mm. if you go to the countries that get that, that sort of weather, they do such a better selection mm. really, don't they? They really do. So we're thinking about leaving to get all the proper gear until we get further up to like northern, northern germany, germany or something like mm. that because then they should have a better selection and like yeah, yeah just better stuff even really. the difference in mountain warehouse in like england near where we live and scotland here the amount of cold weather gear they have here is so much better yeah. so we'll keep looking around the shops up here anyway but i did want to say in pit lockery i have never seen a shop a town sorry with so many alcohol things in the window Jess has never tried whiskey. No, we've definitely got to find a distillery. That's going to happen. People say it's like fire water, so... Also, just one sniff and I'll probably be passed out, but anyway. Look, everybody. It's happened. He's got trousers on. I've had them for about two years, the first time I've worn them. <laughs> Tell you what, this Scottish weather. Not for you? They're built different up here. <laughs> but we've got some bad news for the bungee crew, John. I've tried to suggest that we use a certain kind of bungee, but John's having none of it. Because look, just got to this gorge and they do bungee jumping here. But John, not up for it. That is one bungee you can have, Jess. <laughs> oh well, maybe another time. So I've brought us to Killy Cranky Gorge, which is the site of one of the biggest battles of the first Jacobite Rebellion. And the Jacobites were victorious here, despite being outnumbered by over a thousand soldiers. But the spot I've specifically brought us to is called Soldier's Leap. And it's famous because one of the fleeing redcoats is reported to have jumped the 5.5 metre gap across the gorge here and rushing rapids to escape the chasing clansmen. How cool is that? So in other words, she's brought us to see a rock. A very cool rock. A dull rock. <laughs> Jess is having a freak out. She's just seen some red squirrels. We found red squirrels. Oh my God, they're so cute. <laughs> Nearly lost my lens cap though because I leapt out the car so fast. Oh, he's running, he's running. So I brought us on another walk and John reckons we need to rename our channel Walking with Jess and John. <laughs> <laughs> but I brought us to the grounds of Blair Castle and we're going on a walk where we're supposed to see more red squirrels, which I'm very excited about, and red deer. I really wanted to see Blair Castle. It's like somewhere I've wanted to come since I was a kid, but I'm gutted because it's shut for the winter. But oh well, at least we get to come to the grounds. And I don't know if we've told you this episode or not, but we love a castle. Oh my God, we love castles. <laughs> um, in, the, in the summer this year, we went and done the Germany road trip where it drives 60 kilometers and you see 20 castles yeah. in the stretch. It was yeah. absolutely incredible. It's called the Castle Trail along
along the Rhine. It's amazing. Yeah, so if you've not done that, you've got to get that on your list. Yeah, definitely. But um, I have some cool facts for you. We didn't know where the biggest castle in the world was, because the most castles in the world is in Germany, but the biggest one is in Poland. I think it's called Marybork Castle, and it covers 52 acres. How mad is that to imagine? Tell them the other fact as well. This is my favourite fact, oh, this yeah. one. Yeah. So the difference between a palace and a castle is... Do you that, know? Do you know? Yeah. Do you know? So a castle is a defensive structure, so it's built to be like, back off, you can't take my home. Whereas a palace is just like a really big just, tree house. Just flossing basically, yeah. it's like, look at me <laughs> and my house. So yeah, there's my cool facts about castles. So as you can all remember, when we went to Yorkshire, and Jess's quality accent. No way! <laughs> but she can't do the Scottish one either, so no. she she reckons she sounds a bit more like this Doubtfire than she does anything oh, else. Oh, yes, Marie, little darling! <laughs> Whereas all I can do is, you see, you here, Jimmy, you need to go hem, Jimmy. You need to go hem. Hem, hem. You, um, you wee little c. Don't know! <laughs> um, I've got a. Uh, not the new! Not the new! <laughs> so it's getting dark, we've seen no deer, and I've told Jess we need to go him. <laughs> but she's not having it. No, because I want to see some deer, but I don't know how far we are from the place where they like to eat the grass. We're going to get lost. It'll be fine, just a little bit more. No? Do we have to go? Let's go him. Oh. So Jess has just been YouTube in the old Scottish. Yeah, have so, to practice things. So, you ready? Go on, give it your best shot. Right, are you ready? you got to say, see you with Jimmy. Jamie's, I think, the only one I, I can say. Jimmy. Jimmy, I don't know. I am going to shoot you with Jimmy. <laughs> we, not we. I am going to shoot you with Jimmy. Not bad, not bad. I think the Scottish people will be impressed. Yeah. Write my Scottish accent. John was right. It's a good job we turned him because it's pitch black and it's time to get some food on the table. We do, me. Well, I'm absolutely starving, but before I make dinner, it's time to test out this shower. Well, the shower cubicle is for the win, but I've got a hot tip for you, and excuse the pun, but make sure you've turned on the hot water heater before you start washing your hair. <laughs> so one thing we didn't show you during the build is the hair dryer that John's made me. I didn't want to use a 240 volt hair dryer because obviously it uses so much power. So we've just bought this adapter here, this reducer pipe, John's made a little adapter in the middle and then this is just some 40 mil water pipe. You turn your heating right up, you slide this over your heater then, and you've got a hair dryer. So I'm on with the dinner. I thought we'd better tell you what our first impressions of Scotland are. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, honestly. And you weren't that excited to come where you be honest. I'll tell you what, what one of the, it wasn't I was excited to come, but I always think, right, when you're in England, if you travel in England and Scotland, UK, you say, everything's pretty much the same. Like, the shops are the same, cars are the same, and everything like that. Whereas when you go to another country, everything's different. So it's a bit more exciting. Mm. So, whereas, um, yeah. And also, I was a bit dubious. All the, the negative things I've heard about yeah. campers in Scotland, I was thinking, oh, here we go. We can get moved on every two minutes and that. But... Touch wood. Had a dream of the time. Complete opposite. We've had yeah. some real good park ups, and um, yeah, everyone's been. Uh, yeah, it's not even that busy. We we haven't no. even really seen campers, have we? No, nope, hardly so. at all. Although we did try for one spot tonight that had a camper in it, but that happens. Yeah, There's wild camping in it. But maybe because we're off season, maybe like. Yeah, yeah, I think I think coming out of season's got to be a winner. Yeah. The west coast is supposed to be worse, so we'll have to get back to you on that one when we come. But yeah, so far very impressed with that. And for me, it's been everything I hoped it would be already. Which yeah. sounds so cheesy, but it's so true. Well, we're parked on another little spot tonight, and we're mm. next by, by a lake. And, um, yeah, a lake? Really quite... A loch. A loch. Sorry, a loch. <laughs> All right, Miss Doubtfire. <laughs> but I think we're going to leave you there, because we've run out of time. But we've got lots more exciting travels to do in Scotland. Lots more things to go and see and adventure and experience. More clothes to get. <laughs> more clothes to buy. <laughs> <laughs> more food to eat. You'll just see through the series, we'll just layer up more and more. We'll be yeah. like a Michelin man by the end of it. Yeah, but anyway, so thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next week. See you next week.